We have already learned about the math operators plus, minus, multiplication, and division. Plus, minus, multiplication all work the way we expect. And division has two different ways that it works. One with real division, which is the way we normally do it. And then integer division, which is the way we did it in third grade. There is another operator that comes with C++. It is called the modulus operator, and, and it is signified with the percent key. Remember that when we did the math, when we did our division, remember we had 23 divided by 4, and it gave us a result of 5, but it had a remainder of 3. Well, this remainder is a significant part of the problem, right? So um, the 5 is only part of this story. But the 3 is the rest of the story, and that's the remainder part of it. Well, it is in fact this remainder portion that we can get with the modulus operator. So the modulus operator, these four operators work with real numbers or with integers, either one. The modulus operator is different than that. It only works with integers. If we try it with anything else, we're going to get an error. So um, it produces an integer result. So I'm going to use type int for my result. And let's go ahead and work with a couple of numbers. So let's go ahead with int 1, and we'll go back with the numbers we used, which was 23. And int 2, that was the value of 4. And let's go ahead and compute. We already know what it is if we do int 1 divided by int 2. So okay, so this is the division, and that's where we got the 5. Let's go ahead now and compute the remainder. So the remainder is going to be an integer as well. And the way that I'm going to compute the remainder is I'm going to take int1 mod int2. So I'm going to use that modulus operator. And now I can say the remainder is and let's see if we get what we expect. So the result is 5 with the remainder of 3. Which, which is what we expected, right? That's what we have. We have the result of the division is 5 with a remainder of 3. So now with the combination of both the division used as an integer division and the modulus, we can get both portions of the division so that we have the final result. This also becomes a valuable part of solving problems. Let's go back to the what problems that we had before. Remember this problem where you take a bag of mini chocolate bars to camp? You've got uh, 100 candy bars, you've got seven guys in the tent, and we figured out that each boy got 14. But now what if we want to know how many are left over? After we give everybody 14, how many candy bars are going to be left over? Well, this becomes a remainder problem, right? So here's the problem where we figured out that each scout would get 14 bars. All right, so now let's figure out how many are left. So I'm going to create a new variable called leftover. And I'm going to compute how many are left over by going bars mod scouts. And then this will give me the remainder. So I can say there will be how many? bars left over. Okay, and let's see if we can figure out how many we're going to get. So each scout will get 14 bars, and there will be two bars left over. That gives us an idea of what we're going to have to deal with then to use those leftover bars. Here's our other problem where we had players and we were trying to get in hotel rooms. Remember this one is how the, we have a volleyball team traveling. There are 26 players. Each dorm can hold six players. How many rooms will they need? Remember we figured out that they would need five rooms. Well, how many spare beds will there be? This one isn't quite as straightforward, right? Because 
Now how many beds are left? Spare beds. Let's see if I compute this equals, and if I just do players mod beds, what is that going to give me? What I want to know is will be, and we want to know how many spare beds there's going to be. This will tell us how many friends can tag along, right? Because we're going to have spare beds that we're paying for anyway. Let's go ahead and figure out what we expect the result to be. This is always a good idea to know what you're looking for because then you know when you get there. So we know that we have five rooms and that each room holds six beds. So we know we're going to end up with 30 beds. But we have 26 players, so we're going to have four left over. So let's see what we get when we run this. What we get is that there will be two spare beds. That is not what we expected. Let's see why not. What we're saying is when we divide players by beds, what will we have for our remainder? Right? And this tells us how many are left over. Actually, how many players are left over when we divide it by the six beds per room. So this tells us how many players are left over. What that tells us is how many people are going to be in that spare room, in that extra room. So this tells us that once we have those four bedrooms, we're going to have two players left over to go in that fifth bedroom. So now our question is how many beds there are left, not how many players will be in that room. So how many beds are there? Well, there's the total number of beds, which is six, minus the players that are left over, which is the two, and that will tell us how many spare beds there are. There you go. There we're going to need five rooms, and there will be four spare beds. Now notice, this is a problem that you may in fact do without the modulus operator. In fact, when we did it by hand, we didn't use the modulus operator. We just calculated if we get five rooms, each have six beds, we have 30, and then we subtract players. We can do the math this way as well. This is something that you'll find often in computer science, that there's more than one way to do the same problem. So here, the way that we would do that is we would say, OK, we have rooms. We have how many rooms? And each room has that many beds. So we take rooms times beds, and then we subtract the number of players. That will give us how many spare beds there are. So another calculation that's going to give us exactly the same result in both cases, we get the same result. We just used a different equation to do it. Which one's better? The best one is the one that you think of first, the one that makes most sense to you. They come up with the same answer. Both are correct. A common thing in programming is that we'll see multiple ways to do the same thing. So what do we want to know from here? We want to know about this modulus operator, so this way that we can get the remainder of what's left after a division problem. And remember that it only works with integers.